The other big one in the mountains that people overlook is wind. There is a ton of variation by caliber, distance, bullet type, bullet weight when it comes to wind deflection. But let's focus on a couple common elk cal calibers as an example so I can depict this point to you. The round I shoot in this 308 right here at 300 yards, a 10 mile per hour full value wind is gonna cause seven and a half inches of deflection. At 400 yards, it's gonna be 18 inches of deflection. With the round that I shoot through my seven millimeter, I'm gonna have three and a half inches of deflection at 300 yards, and I'm gonna have around eight inches of deflection at 450 yards. So you can see there's a lot of difference there. But we can all agree that it is a factor. It is relevant in the mountains. You know, a 7 to 15 mile per hour wind is pretty darn normal in a lot of the places that I've hunted and guided. But a lot of you guys are probably squeaking, I can feel the wind, I'll just call the wind, calculate it, stick it in my ballistics program. Most hunters out there think that they can call the wind 50 to 100% correct. And because of that, it's a non-factor. So this is where the hang up is on the wind, all right? If we're talking... 300 yard to 500 yard shots up in the mountains, we're typically talking about cross canyon shots or cross topography shots. Many folks in these situations will actually inversely call the wind or they'll at least miscall it by 70 or 80%. And a lot of you are saying that's a pretty bold statement, but based on the data set, that's what I've seen. I personally have really worked at improving, you know, my wind calling abilities up in the mountains, and I still miscall the wind at least 30 to 40% of the time with varying degrees of inaccuracy. So when it comes to the mountains, heat and cold, you know, thermals, that's essentially running the winds in the mountain. So winds are gonna be topography driven in a sense. This means that the wind at your shooting position is almost certainly not the same wind that will have the most deflection impact on your bullet. This is a really counterintuitive thing to a lot of people. The first way to think about it is, where are shots usually taking place when you're hunting deer and elk? Usually you're on one side of the topography, right? So you're on one side of the drainage, you know, you've, you've got a little elevation or you're down below, but you're on one side of, of a bigger drainage. That's typically the case. That's almost how all stocks end up, all right? So you're on the side of the drainage, you're typically not in the bottom shooting to the animal in the bottom, right? You're usually using that topography so you can look up and see them or you can look down and see them. What that means is that you're on the edge of the topography, right? And so that means you're susceptible to a localized wind where you're sitting, all right? And by localized, I'm talking like right there, right? If you drop down 100 yards in the valley bottom or dropped up to the rim and got up on the flat up there or whatever, that wind could immediately change. So how this plays out a lot when people are trying to estimate the wind in the mountains is they'll, they'll, they'll feel it and they'll say, oh, the wind's just hit me in the back of the head or the wind's just hit me in the face or it's just, you know, it's just quartering a little bit right here. It's quartering to the back of my head. And they're not actually feeling the wind that's gonna hit that bullet through its path what they're feeling at that spot of taking the shot is they're feeling the thermal rush, okay? So, you know, if they're looking over a rim or they're on the side of a rim and they're shooting down, a lot of times they'll feel a wind going right into their face, right? And they'll say, oh, it's, I'm going to just calculate no wind because it's straight at the same, it's on the same uh, path as my bullet. And that goes for, you know, towards the animal or to me. And so I'm feeling it hit me. And same, if it's a dropping thermal, they'll feel it hitting them on the back of the head, right? And they'll say, okay, I'm just going to count for no wind. The problem is, is usually that bigger drainage does have a significant thermal that's going left to right or right to left that is affecting that bullet over, you know, 95% of the bullet's length. And that's the, the wind that's actually going to matter. So you actually have to call that wind correctly. That is where a lot of people get messed up in the mountains when they're calling wind. And that's why there can be so much inaccuracy, right? You know, a guy can be on the edge, edge of the canyon, setting up for a shot, feel a quartering wind that's hitting him on the face, and not realize that that's just the thermal coming up the chute that he's in, right? And it's hitting him this way. And he's actually calling a quartering wind left to right. You know, it's hitting him right here but he's shooting across a canyon that is a solid, exactly perpendicular 15 mile an hour wind right to left. It's much harder than most people think, and it's really easy 
to not only just inaccurately call you know the volume of wind and the direction but you can literally get it inverse some of the time if you're not paying attention the other thing about topography you know heat and cold driven wind is it's like waves all right so when you actually crack that trigger matters the wind is actually going up into areas compressing and then shooting out right you know the heat is changing those density of certain areas and it's creating that pressure and then it'll cycle through and the wind comes through in cycles in the mountains like like i said like waves and you actually have a couple cycles that are much weaker than like the third or fourth cycle so there's a lot of analogies there and so it does matter when you shoot you know you could have a three mile per hour wind right now and then when you shoot it could be 8 10 12 miles per hour that that's not uncommon in the mountains so there's a lot of variability there so when you combine that fact that it's just not consistent with the fact it's very hard to call the wind from the position you're in you have to use a whole lot of factors and, and understand how wind moves through the mountains to call it on its journey you know call the wind on the journey of that bullet that makes wind calling highly variable and highly inaccurate for many, many folks. So just looking at the numbers I gave with the two calibers that I use, you can see how it is easy to add an additional four, five, eight inches of variability based on one's wind calling ability. You can also see that the variability exponentially drops when distance is lowered. Look back at those examples. A 308 with the round that I use, if I cut off 150 yards of distance, it shears off 10 inches of wind impact all right on a seven millimeter it shears off four and a half or five percent inch five inches of wind impact now if this is making your brain hurt it does for me so you're not you're not alone don't worry right now about mastering wind calling all right just account for it when you assume your capabilities for most calibers in hunting conditions it's going to widen that 300 to 500 yard group by at least four or five inches. So you have to consider that that alone, that variability is going to give you four to five, six inches of variability in your group at those distances at a minimum. And that all plays into the fact once you account for that, you can be much more effective because you can adjust the rest of what you're doing out there in the field as a hunter, planning your stocks you know, figuring out those opportunities that are gonna work best for you, you're gonna be better at that if you can better estimate your capabilities.